We're going to be looking now at the life cycle of uh, the first seed vascular plants that we're going to look at, which are the gymnosperms. And the example we'll be looking at will be the pines. So your gymnosperms are typically uh, just best represented as conifers, cone-bearing um, plants, and they are non-flowering, so they have no flowers. Uh, but they are vascular, and they do not reproduce with spores like the other plants we've looked at, the fern and the moss. They are going to reproduce with seeds. So if we're going to um, look at the an overview of the life cycle, the reproductive cycle of, of these guys, um, one thing that we need to look at first, though, is uh, the difference in their actual cones. So here is actually a photograph of a real pine tree. And what we need to notice is that they um, have two different reproductive structures here. The cone that you're probably most familiar with is the actual female cone, the ovulate cone, which is going to produce the um, eggs. And then we have the male cones, which are going to give rise to pollen, which will eventually give rise to sperm. Now we can go back to the actual life cycle. Here it is. And as usual, we want to start with fertilization, which is down here at the bottom, and that's where the sperm and egg are going to come together and make the embryo. So... Let's zoom in on this a little bit, and here is our embryo, which is going to be the new sporophyte, which of course is diploid, so uh, fertilization is always going to be taking two haploids and making a diploid. And the embryo, together with the seed coat, are going to develop into the seed, and then the seed... Uh, a lot of times seeds will have little wing-like structures which are going to help them blow in the wind and uh, become dispersed, uh, which will help them to get to a suitable environment to be able to germinate and grow. So once the seed falls to the ground and begins to germinate, begins to grow, it is going to produce a seedling, as we see right here. And that is going to grow into the mature sporophyte, which is going to be the, the actual pine tree that we're used to seeing. And then that pine tree is, as it gets larger and, and reaches uh, an age and a size where it can reproduce sexually, it will produce an ovulate cone, well, many ovulate cones and, and many pollen cones. And the ovulate cones, well, we can think of as the female part of the tree. And the pollen cones, we can think of as the male part of the tree. And they are going to, obviously the ovulate's eventually going to give rise to eggs. And the pollen cone is eventually going to give rise to sperm. Now let's start by focusing on the ovulate cone. Um, inside the cone, if you could actually cut through this cone uh, in a cross section, you will see that it has lots of ovules. Um, those scales that you typically see on the pine cone, each one of those... Uh, has an ovule in it, and anytime you see ovule, you need to be thinking of eggs. For example, in mammals, we talk about ovulation, which is actually when an egg goes from the ovary, uh, is released from there, and, and getting ready to be fertilized. So ovule, we need to be thinking about eggs and the female reproductive structures. So if we kind of zoom in on the ovulate cone, or excuse me, on the ovule of the ovulate cone, we will see that it has what's called a megasporangium, which is kind of this whole structure right here. And inside of that is going to be a megasporocyte, which is diploid. And it's like a, uh, obviously, site. The suffix site means cell. So, And then whenever you see mega, you need to be thinking about eggs. We're going to talk about sperm in a minute, and that will be micro. But... Um, Eggs are always much larger than sperm, so the megasporocyte is kind of this original 
uh, cell that's going to eventually give rise to eggs. You also, um, this ovule has an integument, uh, kind of a skin around it that protects it, and it has a micropile, which is a hole where the pollen will actually attach so that fertilization can occur. Now, the megasporocyte is going to, by meiosis, Remember, meiosis always takes us from diploid to haploid. By meiosis, is going to produce megaspores. And one of those megaspores is going to become an egg eventually, eventually give rise to the egg. Now, if we want to back up a little bit and we want to look at the male cone, the pollen cone, um, a similar thing is going to happen in the female structure we had megasporangium which gave rise to megasporocytes and those megasporocytes eventually gave rise to megaspores which are haploid we have a similar thing going on here in the pollen cone we are going to have megasporangium which or excuse me microsporangium which are a lot like the megasporangium of the female part of the cone, and they are going to give rise to diploid microsporocytes, and again, that's going to be by mitosis. Remember, mitosis is always going to go from, well, not always, but usually it'll always produce something identical, so if we start with something diploid, we're going to end with something diploid. Sometimes, uh, as we'll find out in a minute, we will start with something haploid, but we will end with something haploid. So mitosis is always going to produce something like itself. So these mycosporangium by mitosis are going to produce microsporocytes. And then those microsporocytes are going to be tiny cells inside the microsporangium. They are going to, by meiosis, produce pollen grains. So meiosis is going to be... Uh, it's going to go from diploid to haploid, and we're going to have each of these pollen grains is going to be differentiated from the other uh, because of the recombination of DNA that happens in meiosis. Eventually, one of these pollen grains is going to find its way to the micropile um, of the ovule uh, to begin fertilization. And now one thing we have to remember is gymnosperms have no flowers. So what that means is that they are going to reproduce by wind. Um, flowering plants will attract pollinators to carry pollen from one place to the other. But gymnosperms uh, don't have flowers. They are going to just rely on wind-blown pollen. And eventually some of that pollen is going to make its way to a micropile of an ovule and begin the process of fertilization. Now, the megasporangium gave rise to the megasporocyte, and that, by meiosis, gave rise to megaspores. And so, these megaspores um, are what are actually going to, to eventually... Uh, give rise to the female part of the plant, the archegonium. The archegonium is going to be greatly reduced in gymnosperms. And so the megaspore by mitosis, now the megaspore is haploid, but remember by mitosis it's going to produce another haploid structure, uh, the archegonium. And the archegonium is going to, again by mitosis, it's going to produce the eggs. So, I'll recap that. The megaspore is going to produce the archegonium, which is going to produce the egg inside the ovule. Now, all of this time, the pollen is what we call it's germinating. In other words, it is going through, uh, it has cells inside of it that are going through mitosis. Um, the, the pollen, we could think of it, the pollen as being the uh, male gametophyte. And we could think of the uh, archegonium here, which came from the megaspore, as being the female gametophyte. And the pollen is going to uh, produce sperm. And those sperm are actually going to uh, make their way toward um, the egg. So there's actually, in, in this particular 
uh, life cycle here, there's there's two eggs that get produced by this uh, archegonium. So here's one. Well, let's see. Let's zoom in a little bit. Get it all fuzzy. So the archegonium is, is giving rise to two eggs, and the pollen is actually going to produce sperm that will fertilize those eggs. Now, a pollen tube is going to form, and basically from the micropile, which again is the opening here where the pollen landed in the first place, it's going to, pollen tube is going to form. Uh, various enzymes and things are going to help that to occur. And um, the sperm is going to go in and fertilize the eggs. And so at that point, we'll be back here at fertilization. Uh, that will produce an embryo, which will develop the embryo with the, the collective structures here. Um, will develop into the seed and eventually into the seedling and into the entire tree. So just to do a very quick recap of the gymnosperm life cycle. Um, fertilization is going to occur and that's going to produce seeds and the seeds are going to produce the dominant sporophyte which is the actual tree. The tree will have an ovulate cone which is the female part. It will have a pollen cone, which is the oops, which is the male part of the tree. Um, the ovulate cone will have ovules in it, and those ovules will have a megasporangium, which by mitosis will produce megasporocytes. And then the megasporocytes, let's see, that happens by mitosis. The megasporocytes then by meiosis will produce megaspores and the megaspores will give rise to the archegonium which will give rise to the eggs and those of course uh, all that happens by mitosis so up here where our mitosis goes from diploid to diploid down here it goes from haploid to haploid mitosis is always like producing like um, in the pollen cone, which is the male part of the tree, uh, similar things happen. You have microsporangium, which are similar to the megasporangium of the female part. And the microsporangium, by mitosis, give rise to the microsporocytes. And those, by meiosis, give rise to pollen grains. Uh, the pollen grains are going to land in the micropile, which is the opening in the ovule, so that fertilization can eventually occur. Um, the egg, uh, the eggs that were produced by the archegonium, are eventually going to be uh, fertilized by sperm produced by the pollen. So once the pollen, remember the pollen is haploid because it was produced by meiosis. So it's haploid, it was produced by meiosis, and it is then going to, by mitosis, produce sperm, which will be haploid. And those haploid sperm will fertilize the eggs, and then uh, the eggs, the, the zygote will form, and that will eventually go into an embryo, which will give rise to the tree, and it all starts over again.